everybody. Welcome back to the table. So I've been talking about using all these blanks that I made to make jewelry and that's what we're going to do real quick. So the jewelry that I'm talking about is making these. So all kinds of different options, um, all kinds of different colors to, to get this design. Um, these are just some of the jewelry blanks that I have. Um, I actually have an entire box full over there with all kinds of different um, types of jewelry. Some other types that I've also made, grab my box, is uh, the square ones using um, resin instead of the glass pieces that they come with. And then of course using the glass toppers for some of them. Um, I've also done large resin pieces like these, and I'll do a tutorial on these um, pretty soon on how to do uh, those type. I also have this one that we've done, as well as ovals. Ovals are one of my favorites because you can get such big pieces in them. But these are a couple of the oval ones that I've done as well. Okay. But today we're just gonna stick with the smaller ones. And I'm gonna show you how to quickly and easily make them. So what I use is I order um, these jewelry blanks and they come with these crystal tops that fit right inside. Um, you could normally get like a bag of like 15 or 30 for like 11 bucks. So they're very, very cost effective. I also use E6000 to do these. Um, some people I've seen, they actually put the glue on the crystal and then they put the crystal on the paper. I do that opposite. I think you get more bubbles that way. So we are going to use this beautiful blue piece that we have here. And what I do is I just kind of put it on there and I just kind of move it around until I see something I like. So let's, let's use that. Okay, so we're going to use that piece right there or we can use that piece. But I think that one's better. So the easiest thing to do is I just take my E6000 and I put it directly on there on the spot that I want. And then I don't put it straight down. That's how you get air bubbles. I actually tilt it a little bit and then let it lay over and then just press down slightly. And that's it, and I leave it just like that until it dries. Now, I'll check on it in about 10, 15 minutes and make sure that no air bubbles had developed on the inside. And that's it, I normally let them dry overnight. Um, I'll just put them over on my drying table and then just let them dry. So we're gonna go ahead and grab another one. Um, this bottom of this crystal is actually dirty a different one okay so I really like this wispy white over here going into the blue so we're gonna grab that piece so we're gonna grab our glue okay and again I go in at an angle and then let it drop on and press down. And that should make it to where you don't get any bubbles. And that's it. And I leave them just like that and I let them dry. So let's do, let's grab another couple pieces. Let's try some different colors. Oh, here's an interesting one. We're gonna go with this one, okay? So we're going to grab our piece, we're going to drop it on, and I already see where I want to go, right here. We're going to grab that. Put the glue on. Put it 
at an angle and then drop it on and squish down and there we go just like that and then we're going to leave it on there and let it dry and so that will actually be a necklace once it's all done okay so i did a couple of these yesterday in uh preparation for this video so now that those are drying let me grab the ones that are already dried so we have a couple we have this one So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these out. Now I try and save as much of the paper as I can so I can use them again. So I grab my X-Acto knife. And I actually need to switch out the blade. Okay, and tighten that down. Okay, so we are actually gonna just be very mindful of your fingers, always know where all of your extremities are. And we're just gonna cut this out real quick. So that way we can use the rest of this. See, if we were going to try and cut these out, then we would have to cut through all of that. And like this piece right here would be perfect in a long pendant or a big oval one or something like that. So that's why I exacto knife this stuff out. Okay, we've got our three pieces. Put the exacto knife away so I don't accidentally grab it. And then we are going to cut the outer edges off. Now you could always just keep trimming this way. I find it easiest to um, kind of grab the glue that got on the side like that and see how it just comes off. Ooh. And then that way you can actually trim even closer and get that paper underneath. So you have a nice clean edge whenever you put it in the blank. we go so it's nice and clean edges and then we're gonna take the jewelry blank figure out which direction we want it to go I kind of want kind of want it angled like that we're gonna do a little drop e8000 directly in the middle drop it in and press down and that's it now it's in there we're just gonna set it aside and let it dry I have found that this is the quickest and easiest way to get the most consistent results when making this jewelry. Just pull that excess off the side. Sometimes you'll have a lot, sometimes you'll have a little. It just depends on how hard you pressed it when you originally put it on the paper. Okay. 
And we're going to go around the edge and clean it up. Silver. I have learned when using this E8000, it likes to leak out, so I always leave a little mini cup over here on the side so I can just lay it in like this and so I don't get glue all over my table. And we're going to drop it in and press down. Now I love using resin, and hopefully I'll have a chance to do a resin tutorial pretty soon, um, a resin video. I actually started messing with resin when I lived in Alaska. Geez, that was eight years ago, I think. So it was a while ago that I started using resin. I've done some resin paintings, um, some resin art. I don't do it as much because it's just so dang expensive. It is so expensive. Use a bronze one because of these colors. There you go, and that's it. Very, very quick, very, very simple, um, but very popular at craft fairs. And you know, you can actually just sell these by themselves for you know three bucks and you'll still you know do pretty well um so i like making them i think they they give you so many options and opportunities to do different colors and all that kind of stuff so um thank you for watching and if you like the video please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends if you have any comments please leave them in the comments section and as always, God bless.